What's going on guys? It is Golazio here. Welcome back to another FIFA 20 tutorial. Guys, today I'm going to be going into depth about dynamic potential. You may have seen a video that went up mine a couple of days ago now and it was all about dynamic potential, actually understanding and what does it mean for FIFA 20 career mode. What I'm actually going to be bringing you today is actually how to utilize dynamic potential to your advantage and actually don't make silly mistakes to make dynamic potential go against you quite easily because that can happen, especially some of the ways I used to sign players. You need to make sure you don't do those traditional techniques anymore, but we'll be going into that in further detail in a few moments' time. But anyway, guys, make sure you do hit that like button. Of course, share it with your friends if they are going to be using career mode and they're going to be trying dynamic potential because this video will definitely help them. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you can see more daily videos from Golazio. Of course, anyway, guys, let's going into dynamic potential. So let's actually get to the basic. What does dynamic potential actually mean? So now potential is all based on performance. However, there is a set potential in place. So someone will have a potential of 80, 85, 90, 72. People will have it. Players will have potential. However, dynamic potential now um, it is all based on performance. So if someone has a 72 potential, they could potentially outgrow that or not reach it if they don't get enough playing time, for example. Dynamic potential is now affected by several different factors. So usually it's all based on morale and playing time. And for that to actually happen, it's all based on contract. So when you actually initially sign a player, if you put them on a critical contract, dynamic potential is going to be a big, big factor in there. And it's the same if you actually sign um, a sporadic type player. If you sign him on that type of contract and you play him loads, dynamic potential is going to go through the roof. So you need to take that in consideration. Let me explain that a bit more. If you sign a player on critical, and usually if you are trying to understand player contracts, usually if you sign a player on critical, they have to play mean enough every single game, um, starting or at least feature coming on as a sub. Meet those criteria, players will start to kick off and then it'll start to fit, um, affect dynamic potential. So players' morale will actually start to go down and then that means that they are likely to not reach that dynamic potential that they actually have in place. It could go a lot lower and their ratings could actually go down. Dynamic potential is still going to have an impact, however, but it is going to be more of you can kind of cut corners a little bit. So if you are a squad rotation player and you don't actually feature them every single game, it doesn't matter. As long as you feature them every couple of games or so, he will still have good morale that meets his contract. And that brings in something else by dynamic potential. Dynamic potential doesn't actually affect any player outside of your squad, just so you know. So only affects the players that you've actually signed into your team. So for example, Mbappe plays for PSG and you're doing a Man United career mode. He will gradually grow to his potential like he normally would, but it, dynamic potential won't actually affect him until you actually sign him. So if you didn't, if you sign him on a critical contract and he doesn't actually play, then his potential could go down. Or you play more often, it could actually succeed that. So really remember that, guys. Dynamic potential doesn't affect players outside your squad. At the moment, the test that I have been running for dynamic potential, lone players doesn't affect it. They grow as normal. Their morale doesn't get affected. As from what I've actually tested so far, maybe if I prolong a career mode, we could potentially see that. But the couple of tests at the moment, you're not going to be seeing dynamic potential for lone players in. However, if you do loan them out, they could potentially have a small factor. They could grow a little bit quicker, but that's yet to be confirmed. And also, just to mention as well, just before I end this video, a few of you asked, does this affect youth players? It does, yeah. It will affect them. It depends what contract you sign them on, how frequently you actually um, play it. So it actually depends whoever's in your squad other than loan players. So now you may be wondering, right, okay, how on earth do I utilize all this to make sure that I use dynamic potential to his actual best of his ability? To be honest, it all begins with, as I mentioned, with those contracts. So the moment you actually sign a player, you need to go, right, okay, is he a third string player? Yes. Okay, we make sure he's on a squad rotation. We'll try to bring him in there. Because the problem is, is that you'll have some players you sign on a critical when he's actually a second string player, and then he's going to be wanting to be played more, and that potential is going to go down straight away. It's going to be the exact same for players in your squad as well. You want to make sure you negotiate contracts. So when you actually sign players in, so if you are signing a first string player, you make sure that they now get a new contract. 
you make sure you get a new contract in place because that will then affect their morale. If you lower their contract from a critical to a squad rotation for argument's sake, that will not affect that dynamic potential as much. So if they're not playing every single game, like the original contract, the dynamic potential is just going to go as normal, not actually go down, which is vitally important. So that's how you actually utilize it to its best of ability. So it's all about those contracts which affect the player's morale. Because what is when you have different contracts, it meets certain criteria basically uh, which will then affect dynamic potential so that is how you actually utilize dynamic potential to your career mode so it's actually going right i need to spend more time negotiating lowering wages changing positions uh, down those lines so for example like i love michael roas right and the great thing is with him is that i'll always have him on a squad rotation type contract because he's never a first string player but you can actually now, with dynamic potential in place, his potential from 72 is going to rise up quite a bit, which is going to be absolutely incredible. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on dynamic potential in the comment section below. Are you excited for it? Uh, does it really matter to you? Let me know in that comment section below. To me, honestly, I'm kind of excited and not too bothered at the same time. I like the idea that I have to. But anyway, guys, I hope that kind of gives you how to actually utilize dynamic potential really, really well. Um, I think it's honestly something that you need to take into consideration and go, right, okay, this is how it needs to be done. This is what I need to do with my players um, and contracts and go from there. But anyway, guys, my name is Golanzo. I want to say thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe. It means a lot support the channel so so much we're closing down 3,000 subs but uh, anyway guys my name is Golazio and guess what I'll see you next time bye bye